Hello. Oh, there we go. How's it going, guys? Hey, you're on. Have you got your, um, you got your video working? Uh, yeah, I can do. What's up? Be, video. Yeah, it'd be great to see your beautiful faces there, fellas. Here we go. Oh, there they are. They're in. Oh, yeah. Hey, boys. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. How are you boys doing? Good. It's early for you, huh? Yeah, mate. It's seven in the morning. This is the earliest I've got up in like three weeks. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, in, I'm on quarantine time. For, like a normal work day, this would be nothing. But like, because I'm on quarantine time, it's just like, it's bloody early. It's kind of dark outside still. Not really, but yeah. Yeah. She's early, but that's all right. Got it. It's not bad getting back into a rhythm. Yeah, <laughs> for a day. For one day. Well, only got <laughs> yeah, but, but it goes both ways because last time uh, you were on the tens and uh, yeah, you were on the top here. Yeah, this time, yeah. this time I'm on the H two O. Yeah, righty. Oh, so we've got a few people here already. How's it going, everyone? Good to see you. Um, so we've got uh, Nick and Matt. Here they're going to be continuing on. I'm actually not sure exactly what you fellas are going to be. Are you just going to be going more into the um, wingsuiting side of stuff, or where are we going to today, fellas? Yeah, it's up to you. I mean, we can answer questions or start chatting about kind of progression into base or okay, so whatever you want to hear. Well, let's start with that. So I'll just give you guys a rundown, everyone who's um, who's part of this. Um, you have down the bottom, you'll have a little bar pop up when you scroll over it. You can open up the chat uh, and make sure it says to everyone. You can ask a question in there. Um, alternatively, if you click the man, uh, the, there should be a participants option or it should come up with um, a few icons and one of them is a little blue hand that says raise hand. If you click that, I can unmute your mic and you guys can ask the boys a question directly. Um, so that's really up to you. But if anyone has a, a question get us going, feel free to uh, jam it on the side. I guess you boys can introduce yourself quickly again, just in case there's anyone who wasn't here last time. Just a little yeah. bit of your experience and then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. All yours. Awesome. All right. I'm Matt. That's Nick. Uh, yeah, we've been hanging out for a few years now, jumping. We uh, currently are stationed or living in or quarantined in Dubai. Um, waiting to see what happens with all that stuff. But yeah, we uh, jump here nine months of the year and jump in Europe three months generally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last couple of years, we've been trying to base jump for three months of the year. Just do the Europe summer and then pretty much otherwise just work here in Dubai and skydive. Yeah. That's about it. Nice. But yeah, wing spoons mainly, I think. So you guys are you're kind of more like um, you just stick rad videos out for everyone, more or less? More or less, uh, yeah. Last few years we've been uh, trying to get into doing a bit more project-based stuff. And yeah, um, yeah, we do uh, videos mostly for Squirrel and a few other uh, people, but yeah, yeah, we try and uh, put together and progress ourselves as well. Um, Did you see that know? question there? So we got, do you yeah. do you guys still fly in the tunnel much? That's a good question, actually. Uh, for the last few years, I've been a bit slack on it for sure. Um, I did spend like years and years every day there, uh, so. It's a bit hard every time I kind of fly there, I get out and I feel a little underdone sort of thing, you know, like it doesn't feel as good as it uh, used to, mainly because I'm not focused on it and I haven't kept up the skills, so I'm a bit rusty. But uh, yes, I do still fly, uh, but not uh, nearly as regularly as before. Like. I used to 
rip the piss out of it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, obviously, because it was your job, and then also for fun. But like for me, I was flying a lot more when I was in the free fly team, and then the wingsuiting was kind of like to get out of the tunnel and out of that free flying thing, and have more of a just the skydive where you can fly anywhere you want, especially in the wingsuit, and make it more of a, a progressed or like a longer flight than just straight down yeah you um have you guys seen you've obviously seen the giant tunnel in uh abu dhabi yeah any any desire to go there and fly in that i know there's a few videos been pumped out before this of people it's, it looks ridiculously massive yeah well yeah we we actually have been there so yeah we've we flew in there it is it's fucking huge um but it's uh yeah, we did like a, a kind of a static night. It was 16? Yeah, there was 16 of us and doing sequentials. And it was really, stuff. for me, it was really intimidating. Yeah. Because I hadn't flown in the tunnel for maybe six months before that. And then they were like, yeah, we're organizing 16 ways in the tunnel. Like, granted, it's big, but it's still 16 people in a tunnel. And they're doing like, pieces and moving pieces so it's pretty intense flying and it was fun it's i love it every time i go back to the tunnel i wish i could have a tunnel at home and a tunnel that i could just go and fly in whenever yeah and if i had that available to me i definitely would be flying more in the tunnel but it, it takes a lot of effort and time to go yeah. and fly in the tunnel it's you amazing then yeah, you can pick up a bit of speed though. Like when I, I'm not a tunnel flyer at all. I've done about 27 minutes and killing it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some like other tea, but the, um, that tunnel though, it seems at the same time like dangerous in a way that you can just pick up that much more speed. You've got that much more pace to kind of power into a wall. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it is. I mean that that's probably one of the dangers for sure, along with many. Like if you. If you're instructing there, I'm sure it's very hard to let go of a grip. But for somebody that knows sort of how to fly and whatnot, I think there's, you know, there's no better place. I also thought about flying the wingsuits a lot in there. We just, it's obviously quite expensive and, you know, at the moment trying to juggle the cash a bit. But Yeah, for sure. For sure if somebody gave me... 10 hours for free in there, I would rip the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it seems like we're not far off like a, uh, a sports game being like played on a whole field of fucking wind tunnel or some shit like that. Exactly. That yeah. would be amazing. It would be pretty cool. So Nick, actually, because you, you just got to brush over it before it, and we went into this, I know it's off wing setting, but you were in um, you were in a free fly group, Azure. Was it Azure? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How long ago was that? And what, how, how, I remember, I remember being at competitions with you guys from um, Dubai and stuff for like that, but I can't remember how did you guys get along. What in the team? It was really uh, no, not not get along. I mean, like how? how like, sorry, how did? Uh, what was your best kind of achievement as the team? Because you guys went pretty hard for a while, eh? Um, yeah, yeah, we were always pushing. It was always tough competitions, and it always. Because it's artistic and it's judged by judges and how people feel, it always felt like maybe it wasn't like totally fair. But yeah, I mean, it was really fun. It was a great time. We were we were second in DIPC in 2015. Which I guess was like best standings or like the the time that we came on the podium. Um, and then we went to Worlds in 2014 and 2016. And in 2016, we were fifth at Worlds. Uh, yeah. But yeah. It's, oh, sorry, you can continue. Yeah, no, it's, it was real good. Like competing, it really pushes you to, to work in a team and work well and 
Because I remember talking to you guys last time and talking about whether you would compete in wingsuiting. Do you think now that you've done that, that's, you've already sort of been in full high-level competition that you're just enjoying the flying now more than with the wingsuiting? It's not so much about, right, let's become the best. Let's just, let's just go out and shred and have fun. Yeah, well, that's what I said with Matt in the beginning. It was never about, all right, we're going to do a wingsuit team and we're not going to do a two-way performance team where we're going to do the the same kind of like prescribed moves like in free flying they have that basically for the wingsuiting and we're not going to do that we're not going to try and do front flip left hand right hand dock this grip this grip and then front flip it's more about what we can how we can change wingsuiting and how we can fly wingsuits different and how we can fly wingsuits like we're free flying like for us, our main goal at the start was to wingsuit free fly from mountains, basically. Yeah. I think when we kind of got together, we sort of had the same uh, push that we wanted to base jump and we wanted to be able to fly certain lines from cliffs. So we, we started kind of edging towards that and it, it sort of a big unknown because like you know there weren't many people we can talk to and ask about what's going to happen or how it's going to work you know so that was kind of our main goal at first and not really competing or doing any competition sort of thing so and we're still keen as fuck on that really yeah it's just uh it's looking ever more difficult for this summer yeah but that's just for this summer (laughs) but in general like we have competed in in wingsuiting but then it's always solo which is cool in its own way because you're not competing in a team and you're just focusing on yourself and doing your thing and full speed that that's the performance right are we yeah you just got to stay within the lane or whatever yeah but not their base is more like you you have to exit on a buzzer and then you, uh, you either fly a straight line or in China it was a bit of a chicane that you had to go through, but it was a speed run. Oh, is that the world, the world Base Race? The, oh, the Wingsuit uh, League? Uh, the, sorry, the World Wingsuit League. Yeah. I've actually done XRW in that area. Yeah? Yeah, we went over for, um, I was doing it with Team One Call and we went over for a TV show, of all things, to no. digress. But yeah, we did... Um, yeah, in Norway. No, no, in, um, in China. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're like, uh, there was three, I was running camera, then there was Bjorn from uh, One Call who was uh, taking the dock and Espen Fadness was the wingsuiter. So Espen jumped from the, um, from the race exit and then yeah. we kind of we lined it up and flew down, and we landed in that car park uh, oh. just a little bit further. Yeah, they laid like gravel down for us, um, so that we could slide or some shit. I don't know. It was funny though. It was buzzy. Go away. Super nice, huh? Oh, dude, it was so it was so cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, I loved we loved it. it there, man, we had like a week of pure good weather last yeah. year. It was perfect. We um. Because we were in a helicopter and it was military run, they they didn't want like there was a cloud off in the distance. It was like a tiny wispy cloud. This is it was worse than Dubai, and they were like, "No, it's too cloudy. Clouds rolling in." Like I, <laughs> we were trying to do, um, I was doing just test runs, so I wasn't running camera. I was just setting it up just to make sure like the glide and everything was good. So I was basically the guinea pig with Espen. And we yeah. were just making sure it was doable, and I remember going up. And we got to about seven or eight grand and there's a cloud miles away. And they were just like, uh, no, we need to, it's too cloudy. We need to go now or you need to. And I was like, no, mate, just take us out. He ended up taking us out from like six grand or whatever. He was like, we go down. I was like, no, I'm going. Just put me out over the mountain. I don't give a shit. I want to get out of this bucket helicopter. Um, but they were so, oh man, the military, they were freaking out like at the slightest little bit of cloud. But it was awesome. It was amazing. So we have a question here, and I Ooh. think it's because we should uh, get into that also because we can talk about We spoke about it a bit last time of how to progress from skydiving to base jumping. 
and wingsuit flying, or even just skydiving and then wingsuit flying. So if there are more questions about that, um, go for it. Yeah, we definitely get back into that again. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back to the, so the question is, was there a question? Well, recommendations and suggestions to start with the, the wingsuiting. It will be real quick, what I covered last time will be get the right canopy. If you've been free flying and you've been progressing to a smaller and smaller canopy, you will have to start off getting another a bigger canopy, probably another one so that you can wingsuit safely. And then go and get coaching from people that are around you. If there's anyone else that's wingsuiting at your drop zone, try and get help from them. And there's no rush. If you're jumping a small wingsuit and you're doing really good in a small wingsuit, there's heaps to do. The biggest problem that I think I see is people like trying to progress real quick and jumping into a bigger suit because they don't want to progress from a smaller suit to a mid-sized suit to a bigger suit. So take your time with the mid-sized suit, fly, back fly, belly fly, feel comfortable in transitions and then progress into a bigger suit. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the times they want to borrow the small suit from a friend so it doesn't fit so good and stuff like that and they've already ordered a big suit. Uh, it's worth, you know, working your way up progression because obviously you have less shit to deal with. But yeah, get into it because it's the future. <laughs> oh, I think you might be biased, mate. <laughs> Big time. I love it. Look, Tux has got a serious question there. Uh, Did you get a new handlebar mounting? Oh, uh, oh, the ma oh, my moustache? No, yeah. he's always... No, I always had it. It's a bit longer now, though. It's getting a bit thicker. Yeah. I'm growing <laughs> it for your new child. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Tux? It's good to see Tux. <laughs> How are you, mate? Oh, hey, Luca. <laughs> How are you, man? Are you there with Omar Muhammad? Yeah, almost right here, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's are you a nice fine, man. Right there, bro. Fucking give it a go. <laughs> no, I just shaved it in today, mate. Yeah, I thought so. There was a fucking new shave right there. <laughs> no, I've always grown good down the cheeks, just not so good in the top lip. <laughs> you mean the key part of where the mustache needs to be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I didn't have a thick whisker under the nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got another question there, I think. You guys want to run through it? Yeah. Is a suit uh, that you can keep and progress use, is it still good for it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like a lot of the the... Uh, shit, what did I do? A lot I'm just going to read the question quickly, Munting, just because this will go, so people yeah. can't see the question when it goes online. Um, so when you buy a suit, I saw that a small suit like the Swift is a suit that you can keep as you progress and use it still for some base jumps, etc. as conditions allow. Is the Swift Yeah, the exactly. So you, you'd liken a Swift nowadays to like a lot of the small one-piece kind of tracking suits. It's maybe got a little bit more performance similar the same um so yeah it's a it's a good idea to kind of start with your uh progressing into base jumps with a smaller suit because it's going to help you with the the pull side of things you know and calm your mind a bit um it's great for any sort of jumps from you know your brand toe to your yeah. sort of you know, your high vertical drops or anything in the valley, um, things like that, or any sort of straightforward jump, you know? But so, yeah, that, I mean, basically when you start, you start doing distance runs. So you exit, you fly from the exit, you pull in open area, you land, and you run that over and over until you feel good, Yeah, I think. There, there isn't a formula that we can recommend for everyone because it's always going to be different for a person that's done 
a whole bunch of jumps on a wingsuit and then like progress from a small wingsuit to a big suit. And then all of a sudden they've decided that they want to start base jumping. But now they already have hundreds of jumps, for example, on a bigger suit skydiving. Then they don't have to go all the way back to a swift on their first wingsuit base jump. But if you have only done like a few or fewer wingsuit jumps, skydiving on a smaller suit, and then you want to start base jumping, then obviously you'll start base jumping on that suit. And then you should probably stay base jumping on the smaller suit on exits that allow for smaller suits, if that makes sense. Yeah, just be smart about it, I guess. Uh, and yeah. make, sure you, make sure you have a mentor as well would be a good one. Someone experienced, I just... I think me and Nick, we didn't learn kind of a conventional way. Like we kind of um, pushed ourselves and kind of, I think with anything base related, it comes time. down more to how you police yourself and how you kind of uh, progress with your own mind sort of thing, because it's very easy to get, carried away it, it it i don't think it's a very physically demanding sport so it is quite easy to progress fast and it's it's very easy to kind of get carried away and get start doing things that you probably shouldn't so i think we've both been very good at holding ourselves back uh you know, before we kind of wanted to achieve the things that we did. Nice. Uh, there's a question there about have you been in a wingsuit tunnel? Uh, we kind of covered this last time, but we both haven't yet. Um, I really want to. I think it looks uh, uh, great. And I think there's a lot of progression to be made in that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure the tunnel is is going to be helping people the same way that the vertical tunnel is helping people and has been helping people for the last five, ten years, the same way the wingsuit tunnel will help people in the next ten years. Yeah. I think you guys touched base with it last. I think it was you, Nick, as well, saying like it, initially when it came out, it had issues like anything new. Like I guess it, if you were to say, uh, if you were to compare it to the first vertical wind tunnels, however many years ago when they came out to now, they're just almost non-comparable in the efficiency of the new ones. So you imagine, I guess, like what you were saying, in 10 years, what that tunnel, what its specs going to be like and what you can do in it. Yeah. Yeah, and you you already see like... The guys in there, like they're starting to get smoother, faster, cleaner, and it's exactly what kind of happened with the vertical tunnel, you know. And then suddenly the whole world was behind the eight ball, you know. Yeah. So, or the whole skydiving scene, you know. So, it's like if 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 you can get into it now and progress, that's what we're all trying to do. Here we go. So from Renee, Renee, sorry. Who do you look to for inspiration as far as pushing the limits of wingsuiting right now? I, who is really pushing the boundaries in wingsuiting besides you legends? So for us, we were super lucky. We kind of come up in Dubai. So we had some really good kind of mentors and guys that kind of pushed us a lot in like Noah and Julian Bull, um, Greg, Shelton, Micah, um, those four, they were like kind of the wingsuit team. And I think both of us kind of took note of that and looked up to them, obviously, because they started free flying like us, except for Julian, he was always a wingsuit rat. And then, uh, from there, like, you know, Fred and Vince as well, guys like that. And it, it definitely recently, like, learning a bit about, like, wingsuit projects and base sort of side of things. 
we've come to learn like a good way of approaching things. And a lot of that has come from doing projects with Noah, Fred and Vince and just the way they, they approach the, the problem, you know, and it's always like, you know, you get given something that you have to deliver and from there you've got to try and do that in a safe way. Yeah. Sort of thing. So another like group of people that are definitely throwing there is like the French, the flying Frenchies. They have a really cool attitude towards wingsuit base jumping, the guys that we've hung out with, like Vince Cott and people like that, that are just in it to have fun and push each other and do good stuff, but do it together and do it as a group that are having fun. So those are the kind of people that we generally look up to. Yeah. And then obviously Espen. Yeah. Espen, like the one called Espen and those guys that are doing, yeah, just guys that are having fun doing it. Yeah. Sort of leaning away from the focusing on competition, competition, competition. Yeah, we all kind of communicate as well. And like even guys like Chris Burns from Australia, we like uh, uh, spent like a lot of last summer with him and he taught us heaps about racing and base race, wingsuit, getting speed from the exit and stuff. Yeah. I guess, so I guess basically we all learn together. Yeah. I, I think someone we talked about this in one of our other ones and it was just like a lot of people seem to say they don't have one maybe person they look up to or they learn from. You kind of take lessons from everyone, like you were saying, because there's so many different facets of wingsuiting. You guys can pick up like Chris, for example, he's very much a race focused wingsuiter and uh, yeah. you've, you've taken a little bit of knowledge from him. So that's really cool. Uh, Chris, um, like if, if you wanted to speak to a guy that is like very deep into wingsuit skydive races as well as base races, you can't look any further than him. I mean, he understands both aspects and he's basically put the last few years into that sort of thing. So, and it's why he's winning wingsuit league. And he like, we were there at a comp and I've never seen somebody offer basically the whole group, the keys to winning. The and whole outline. Like, like everything, honestly, everything you imagine you need to do. Yeah. You imagine going to a swoop comp and somebody telling you how to, like how to all, win all the secrets and saying this is how you win go and win and then still chris wins that's pretty amazing you know? yeah i know but i think he he explains it and he kind of said like it takes pressure off him so he he can then perform the way that he wants and i kind of get that yeah but yeah it was it was both amazing and like yeah at times, you're like, fuck, why are you telling them, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got another question on the side there from uh, old Timothy Perrine. How's it going, Tim? Um, it's yeah. a canopy sort of base one. Do you think, uh, do you guys know if Squirrel are making a wingsuit design specifically for XRW? Yes. I feel like, yeah? Uh, yes. They've already made it. They made it back four years ago, probably, and it's called the Freak. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Yeah. No, but in, like in all seriousness with the the progression of canopies more than i guess the progression of wingsuits but in both in both ranges like they've both met each other and yeah. you see people flying even atcs with more highly loaded canopies and other wingsuits so i don't think we need to find a specific wingsuit that is only going to do xrw there yeah. are a bunch of wingsuits out there nowadays already that everyone's flying that are way more than what you will need for XRW. Mm -hmm. yeah. So your average wingsuit that people are flying that you're going to have fun with your friends with, that's way more than enough for XRW. 
I have a quick question, seeing as like uh, having done quite a bit of XRW, and I was doing it back in the day when we had to use ratchets. What's your guys' optimal wing loading? Because your wing suiters have started getting spoiled, and you're just like, yeah, load it up 3.5, that'll be good. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's you? No, hey, that's like, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. For, for us, for sure, if it's 3.6, we have a few people that we jump with here in Dubai. Junior. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but some of the Czech guys, Kuba, Kuba, Kuba at one stage. Jakob Slanka. Oh, do we only have yeah. nine minutes? Mate, we get yeah. up to 30 minutes, so we're good to go. Keep going. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Kuba was, he's loading sometimes at 3.6 or 3.7, like ridiculous amounts. So you, you have no trouble flying around. You guys get spoiled and you get used to it. And then you come into like a canopy pilot who's like, oh, you want to do some XRW? Yeah, what are you loaded at? 3.2? No, nah, mate. Get out of here. <laughs> but I think That's even like, like, yeah, like 3, 3.2 is probably the lower side of it. But what's the, still... what's the lowest you've done it? I've done it with a person at, at 2.9. Yeah. I, I wouldn't honestly be able to say what exactly. Yeah, I don't is. know. Yeah. And it depends on the approach, but it doesn't feel nice. Yeah. Like when it's that low, it's like... No, at so at 3.7, 3. the wingsuit can get out before the canopy. Yeah. You have yeah. no problem. And then you meet up and then you have the whole skydive. If you go down to the lower numbers, then you kind of waste or using a lot of time of the skydive. Yeah. And I guess just to fit, like finish this topic is um, it's not everyone's kind of working. The, way, the canopy's trying to go as fast as they can and they can only do so much for body position and you guys are trying to go as slow as you can. That's when we go back to what I guess we'd consider now classic XRW, which is very static and in my opinion, quite boring. Yeah, exactly. All right, we've got another question. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, what canopies are you flying and have you tried the Kraken? Uh, how do you find it? This is We went over this last time, but you might as well go and do it again. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we've been flying the uh kraken for the last year and a half yeah yeah and uh yeah it's awesome we kind of find it as a good uh mix between um performance and what you want from a wingsuit canopy uh so far openings have been fantastic um and we feel that you get a swoop from it as well so if you're kind of into that, if you're not, la di da, then you can work towards that. But um, yeah, the canopy's awesome for us. Yeah, as a wingsuit canopy, it's great. It has solid openings and solid swoops. We're both doing 270s on them, having awesome landings. And then obviously when we're not wingsuiting, then we get to jump the layer. Yeah. We don't have Petras, but the layer does pretty good as a, when yeah. we do get to jump, not wingsuiting, then <laughs> we're pretty stoked on the layer. Mad hookies. Mad That's hookies. <laughs> oh, another question here. Is there a specific jump or exit that scares you to shit uh, that you've either done or still want to do without giving secrets away? Every jump. No, I'm joking. There's definitely more ones. No, like, there, there are. I reckon there's there's jumps that in the beginning, or well, the first time you do it, that it is scary. There's ones where you get to, maybe just based on the day, because we're not feeling as current as other times, and you get to an exit and it feels a bit more scary than other jumps have felt. Yeah. At this point, I wouldn't say that there's a jump that's that we need to work up too still that's yeah no too but scary it's for me for me it's the ones that are like uh less planned so the ones where you kind of uh maybe you you've wanted to do that jump for a while for instance like man lincoln like we've yeah. been talking about it for ages we spoke to a guy at the pub he drew us a map like a paper one where to go and uh the next day we went and found it ourselves, and we were like walking 
down a ridge trying to find this spot and uh yeah that kind of got my heart rate going a bit just because we like you know but you don't know you know and then like you try and find and we're looking at different spots the paper map you find and you're like oh yeah it looks all right that, but that wasn't just the, the jump it was more of like the experience of finding the jump yeah because the last words that he had said was when you get to it you're going to think it's not an exit but it is an exit <laughs> yeah so we're walking down and we're like is it this and it's like no it's definitely not that like that's like 40 meters yeah. so that's not it and then i threw a rock and then like i was like boom <laughs> like it hit in like two like, seconds <laughs> and I was, no, I was that's like, definitely no, not it. But we, like, we no, were no, like far it. enough that we thought we... Yeah, it was fucked, man. That day was pretty bad. But anyways, that jump was awesome, though. And when we found it, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, when we found it, it was like, well, this actually kind of looks like an exit. And it, <laughs> it compared to the exit of the video that we had seen yeah. and had it with us and the pin. So... It made sense. Is it like that? Yeah. You're back to your base jump. Yeah, this kind of looks like an exit. It's fucking huck it. No, no. Well, obviously, like you have, <laughs> you have details on the jump, and you have the yeah. video, and you know, and you have a laser, so you know that it's it's not forty meters. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys read that one from Joseph there? Yeah. Yes. Awesome question. So basically, it's just asking. Uh, he's seen a prototype deployment system with a bride or is. Uh, had him behind the arm uh, and yeah. a pocket open with the ripcord. Have, have you guys seen anything yeah. like this? So it's called like a wingtip pouch or a Violetta or wingtip Violetta, I think. So basically, uh, I don't want to slag it out too much, but like for me, I've never had too many issues with the pool. Um, I kind of feel like if you are having that much of a problem with the pool, then you should probably sort that out skydiving. Um, they, they obviously don't use it so much skydiving. I don't think I've ever seen anyone with that. And I think the downsides of having that, are obviously if you're going to swap wingsuits, like we use different suits a lot then you need to swap all that shit. So it's not just like swapping wingsuit on rig. And then I think also we've seen a few videos of people where, uh, cause the bridle runs all the way from the rig up the suit. Um, a lot of the times the bridles come out, depending on it's whether they're packing techniques or the, or the way that the magnets have clipped because it runs all the way. It's, it's a long way. And uh, so I think there's a big danger of that sort of thing of like premature opening and, and horseshoes sort of thing. And yeah. I just kind of feel like the system works already. And I think if, if you're prepared enough, it, it should yeah. be fine for the the way that the suits are nowadays and the suits that we're jumping they're still the same suits that we're skydiving so there's no reason why you can't reach your boc especially in a smaller suit if you're jumping some kind of prototype suit that you've made yourself that is restricting you to reach your boc and you need a wingtip pouch maybe it's great for you it's fantastic but on the average suit that is like mass manufactured and everyone is jumping from planes, you can practice that enough that you don't have a problem ever to reach your BOC. Mm. Right out, fellas. So I that's my opinion on it. And that's like, I feel like it's not, you're, you're increasing other risk factors. You're putting more issues and more problems into the pool in a base jump environment, especially that you don't need, that you could overcome by learning to deal with the problem, the problem being like not being able to reach your BOC by just doing a few more jumps. Mm. 
Yeah. Right, 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 boys. Sorry, I got to cut in there because we're about to get cut off. We have probably about 30 seconds left. Thank you very much, lads. It's been awesome as always. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I hope you learned something, had a little laugh. I know I did. Um, look out for the next one. And nice work, fellas. Cheers to that. Appreciate right. it. See you, boys. Woo! Have a good one.